Hey everyone, this is Danielle playing some Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time we started Metro Kingdom, we did about half of it, as you can see, we did exactly half of it. <laughs> so now we've got to find another 10 moons in order to power up the Odyssey the rest of the way. Uh, there are a lot of places to get moons in the Metro Kingdom. It's kind of an enormous playground. It's really great that way. Um, it is probably one of my favorites. Honestly, I'm going to say that about most humans in the game because they're all really good. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure where, to, where we should be starting, really. Uh, let me think. Oh, let's do the RC car. I love that. So, this is Frank from Accounting over here. Sorry, Jeff from Accounting, not Frank from Accounting. Jeff from Accounting, you can capture this guy and he'll let you drive his RC car, which you do by capturing the human who's holding the controls, you do not capture the car. And then you can just carefully steer the car in here. There we go. It is possible to skip that, skip capturing Jeff here in order to do it a lot faster, but we didn't do that. Uh, there's a jump rope challenge over here. The easiest way to do that would be to get the scooter. The even easier way would be to wait until a bit later and do it once we have a certain glitch we can use to get there faster. Uh, I think there's a 2D section in here. I'm not sure we can enter it. Yeah, we can't enter that 2D section, so we can't get that moon. Uh, let's have another look around, see what we can do. We can bounce on this taxi here. It's pretty fun. Uh, if we talk to Pauline over there, she will give us the next part of the story, which we'll do shortly, but I just want a bit of a wander around. Head over here. So this is the Mayor Pauline Commemorative Park, as you can see from that. Uh, there's a piece of the Mecha Wigglob, which we destroyed earlier. Get another moon out of it. There we go. I guess that kind of makes sense, because it was stealing all the power moons in order to power itself, and... Like, that's the reason we had to destroy it, so... Naturally, it's full of power moons, I guess? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, there's also some zappy zappies here. Sorry, pow these power line thingies. Which we can use to climb to the top of... This tower here. And we can climb to the very top of the town hall, which is much faster now because of those extra lines we have to go through. And at the very top, once we've managed to climb up there, it's not too tricky, we just got to grab the right spot. Which I'm not managing to do because I'm at the wrong angle. Yeah, once we can climb to the top of this, there'll be a moon right at the top there. So, we just have to figure out our best to get up there. Okay, yeah, if we go into the here first, and then there, there we go. That'll work. Yeah! Dizzying heights. So yeah, we can get a moon from up here, which we just did. Uh, there's another moon over there. I don't know if we can do it with just a roll. Yes, we can. So now, this is this pool, you can access it later on. Um, Way later in the game, there'll be some poles buried into this wall here you can use to climb up, but doing it this way is also very doable and can be done much earlier in the game, so we're going to do it this way. <laughs> also, we can't finish the story here, so I don't think we can actually do it the other way. So that's 4 out of 10, making good progress. Uh, let's see. We could do the slot machine, but I don't really want to, and that'll be kind of annoying with the state we're in. Uh, over here, there's a hidden moon. You can only tell because of the rumbling, which you can't feel, but I'm getting a lot of rumble right here, which is why the moon is right there. There you go. So that's five out of ten moons done. Uh, I'm not sure if we can do that one yet or not, actually. Hmm. What if we can do... We have a good book. I think it might not be open yet, it might open up later. Yeah, it seems to be over there, but it hasn't opened up yet. It's probably, you have to probably do the story for it to show up. We already bought a moon, so we can't buy another moon, because we haven't done the story all the way yet. 
you don't actually have to do the story in every kingdom in order to complete the main story, thankfully. So, uh, if you capture this, you can take a look around in the sky, which is fun because you can take a look at how tall that building is, which is pretty impressive. But you can also... Uh, maybe I can't. Maybe I can't yet. Uh, at some point, there is a flying sphinx you can look at, and when you look at the sphinx, you get a moon, but... It doesn't look like it's there yet, so we can't do that. I believe if we accidentally bonk on this, we can <laughs> just climb up this fire escape here. Uh, there's one of the pots you can plant a seed in. We're not going to do that because seeds take too long to grow. Um, we could do it, um, and holding the seed stops you, you, you from crouching, so it would make it pretty easy. Uh, there's a moon over here we can get. It's a good question. Who piled garbage on a power moon? Seems pretty foolish. Uh, here's one of them poles. This one's a bit more useful than some of the others because, you know, it's up high, we're actually going to go somewhere. Instead of just being on, on ground level and doing nothing. So we can use it to get over here, which is kind of handy. Uh, that's one of these poles, it helps get up here. Rooftop garden. You actually do have to come up here to do part of the story, so... Maybe I will go start the story. Uh, if you go talk to Pauline outside, you can get her to start up the main story. Yeah, let's go talk to Pauline. We need four more power moons, and there are four moons involved in the next part of the story, so that's kind of perfect. Hello, Pauline. Hi. Yes, I'd love to join the festival. I mean, I can't, but I'd love to. So, we talked to this fellow over here. And... We get his approval and a moon. Drummer on board. Yeah! Alright, so, we have to find four musicians around the town, basically. That's one of them. We get walked back here after each one. The auditorium, which is on the ground floor of the city hall. There's another one over here on, in the park. It is possible to get to the park without using the power line by climbing up to the top of the tower. Uh, it's just harder, and I probably couldn't do it. Yeah, I want a musical mission for the mayor. Please help me. Thanks, man. That's the bassist, I think? Um, ba -da -da -dum. Ba -da -da. Actually, I think I will just do all the story moons. Um, no, wait. There's, there's, there's a, f there's more than. I, I, I would kind of like to show you guys what happens when you go to the festival and can't do it, but that would require doing a lot more moons, so maybe not. Um. Anyway, there's another musician over here. Three of them are very easy to get to. This is the guitarist who's just sort of hanging out. There we go, we need one more moon. Uh, if we get the last band member, that'll do the trick. So let's go do that. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Uh, we already basically went to where the last band member is. It's on top of that rooftop garden we were at earlier. Or near the rooftop garden, anyway. <sighs> Bit of a yawn there, because I'm a, a sleepy girl. Uh, let's see. I believe if we get onto these these little awnings here, we can bounce our way up. Yes. Okay, so we just have to climb up here. Uh. And there's the last musician we need. He's just sort of hanging out on the rooftop where no one can hear him. Oddly enough, if you visit him before you start the quest, he's actually complaining that no one can hear him, which is kind of funny. 
I'm just gonna walk back up because I accidentally moved and the motion control happened. Uh Anyway, yeah, New Donk City has a lot of moves to offer. There, I think there's 89 total. Of course, you only need 20 to get through the main stories, and that's all we're doing right now. But yeah, there's a lot to do here, and it's a lot of fun. Hello. Uh, well, I'm Groovy, I'm the Groovy Hat Man. <laughs> So that's the whole band done. You actually have to do one more like side mission sort of thing in order to get the next part of the story done. This, the underground power plant. We don't need any more moons though, and you get a moon for doing that, so I don't really want to do that right now. I want to finish with like the minimum moons, which I believe is 124. So we're just going to leave for now. Sorry, Mepoline. Your festival is, is not going to happen. We're just going to head on to the next kingdom and see how long it takes us. Um, because this video hasn't been that long. Um, if I recall correctly, we will get to choose which kingdom to go to next, which is kind of neat. So yeah, we've got exactly 20 moons, so we're now at 75. Once we cash these in... There we go. So she's powered up, so we can move on to another kingdom. I believe the next part is the choice between Seaside and Snow? Yes. Okay, so this is the other place where you get a bit of non-linearity non in terms of level select. You can pick between these two, and then you go to the other one. So exactly like with Lake and Wooded, you have to do both of them, you just get to pick the order. So, it's not really that non-linear, it's just a little bit of choice. It's kind of fun. Um, I'm going to do snow first. Uh, the main story here involves capturing again. So I'll try to get moons another way if I can, without doing that main story. Uh, we'll see how we go. I believe you don't need very many moons to do the snow kingdom, so I think it would be doable. Uh, uh, yeah, I know about wall jumps. I've done a lot of them. So, yeah, the Snow Kingdom is, of course, you know, cold. There's all this ice and stuff. Uh, most of the kingdom is actually underground. Um, there's a town you visit, which is just called Shiveria Town. Um, it's where that sparkle is, so we will be heading down there. But we might look around up here first to see if there's any moons we can gather. Ba -da -ba -da -da. Yeah, Bowser stole the cake, so... Um, we're going to try to get the cake back, but we're not going to succeed because she already left and took the cake with her, so... Uh, I do believe if we drop down here and head into this water... Uh, the water here is very cold, so you have to be careful. If you stay in it for more than like a second or two, you take damage. So you have to watch out for that. Uh, you can avoid it by capturing a cheap cheap because the cheap cheaps here are like special snow cheap cheaps. I think they're actually called snow cheap cheaps, and they're not like affected by the cold water the way you are. So okay, that this is a bit of a problem because the blizzard's still active. A lot of these are locked off, so we may actually have to head in and do the main story. Oddly enough, the main story does end the blizzard when you finish it, even though the last thing you do is just win a race. You, you wouldn't think that that would stop the blizzard, but it, it apparently does. Also, huh, ten moons here, not eight. I thought it was, I thought it was eight, but it's ten. Alright, so underneath this pile of, of snow here is the Shiveria town, which is basically where most of the Snow Kingdom is. The like top level of Shiveria is quite small. And a lot of stuff just happens down here. Um, might use that hint out, actually. Uh, I believe there is already... Yeah, there's a moon over here, which you can get by wall jumping off these boxes. Um, hang on. There we go. Ba -da -ba. Yeah! 
So that's one. Uh, we need nine more. Uh, so that, that's a hint art moon, which counts as a moon for here when we get it. But you actually have to go back to the Lost Kingdom to actually collect it. So I prefer to avoid having to backtrack if possible. Uh, so let's look for some other moons we can do. Um, there are four main, like, story moons here. Um, basically, this door, there's four layers here. Getting the four story moons in these four rooms on the side will open it up. Uh, so we will be doing that. First, let's just head over here, though. Because if we climb up this pole, there are some other moons we can already do. Uh, we can't get that one because we need to get some purple coins. Uh, that guy won't open the door unless we're wearing snow gear. Which we're not wearing, obviously. We're wearing the same clothes the game gave us ages ago. Oh, the reason I'm sliding down is because I'm holding crouch. I just realised that that's how these poles work. <laughs> Man, I've been playing for this long and I only just noticed that it does that to the poles. Oh my goodness. Anyway, there's a moon here. So that's two. And there is another moon just up the top here that we can grab pretty easily. Just by heading this direction. Also, this Mario gets all covered in snow, which is kind of cute. Um, it's like the suit I was mentioning earlier, but with snow instead. Uh, here we go, we can get this moon. So that's three out of ten. Uh, we will go and do some of the sub rooms. I don't know which ones are easier than others. Well, we'll have a look. Um, they don't involve very much capturing. Like, you can capture stuff in all of them, I think. But, maybe not all of them. Eh, we'll see. Okay, this one, Icicle Cavern, you do have some capturing involved. If you want to get all the moons, you have to capture some of these Goombas. Hopefully, without doing that. I, I believe knocking them off the edge means I can't get the moon. But yeah, when you're a Goomba, you just sort of run around on this without any problems. It does, you don't slip on the ice. Which is interesting. I guess it's because their feet are so, like, big and flat. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I need four Goombas to get to this spot here. In order to open that door. There's a moon behind there. Um, I think because I lost that... Oh, no. No, they respawn. Okay, cool. I can go back and get that Goomba. So, yeah, the controls when you're a Goomba are a little weird. Um, you hold Y to dash. See, you normally you just walk, but if you hold Y, you get a little faster. Um, you have jumping. Oops. You have jumping normally, and you have a high jump, which you do by shaking the controller. I don't know why they didn't just have a jump that was a bit higher to begin with instead of using motion control, but there you have it. Uh, so yeah, you can get a moon that way. Uh, you don't need the Goomba stack after that, so we're going to just ditch it. It is possible, uh, but very difficult to jump all the way over there from the very start. I don't know how to do it. And I don't think you can do it while crouching. I think it needs like a rolling cappy jump, or a cappy roll jump, whatever that move is called. And I don't think we can do those while permanently crouching. So we're just going to do this story the normal way. Uh, Here, you basically just need to step on these little tiles to make all the icicles fall. It's pretty easy. Um, you can take a bit of damage if the icicles fall on you, so you got to be a little, a little bit careful. Um, there's also some stuff up here, which is worth getting. I think it's just purple coins, but, you know, nothing wrong with getting a few purple coins now and then. Um, I accidentally dived because of the motion control. So yeah, you have to break all, I think, three of these. Oops. I can go by. I sure can, Cappy. So when Cappy's talking, her eyes appear in the overworld as well, which is, I think, pretty cute. So yeah, that just makes a bridge and you can reach the moon really easily. I think there are multiple ways. I think you could probably long jump around the icicle. Unless there's like an invisible wall or something. But yeah, the intended way to do it is like that. We have just done it. And that's the first story moon here. So, these four story moons, you can do them in any order you want, really. Like, this isn't necessarily the first one. And each one you, one you do opens one of the four Bowser doors that she left out there. Which, once you've done all four of them, it unlocks the main 
challenge, basically. But as mentioned, what you use capturing to do that challenge, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, if we do uh, two more of these, we should be fine. Okay, this one, Hollow Crevasse. Um, it's got the cold water I was talking about from the top level. It's also got these guys, which are kind of scary. Because they try to eat you. Also, that's the first moon chart I've touched in the game. Which is why Cappy's telling me what it is. You're supposed to get the first ones in Chevaria, not oh, Chevaria, in Tostarina. But, you know, we skipped all that. Because we couldn't do the story in Tostarina. So, we're getting them in Chevaria instead. So yeah, that's reasonably easy. Um, you can get chomped by those those toothy thingies. It's a little scary, but it's not like insurmountably dangerous or anything. And they're very helpful as well in this part because you need to you know, climb up and you can't get up otherwise. Easy peasy. Uh, but then, over here, there's something hidden. Sort of, isn't very hidden. But yeah, you can just go over here, and there's another moon. In this chest. Each of these areas has one, like, story moon and one minor moon as well. So, yeah, you get eight moons out of all of these. If you do each one. Which, we, we're not doing, but, you know. Oh, see, so yeah, they do damage if you're not careful. Also, yeah, that can happen. Um, the water doesn't kill you, like, straight away. It takes a little while, so if you can get out of the water, you're okay. You do have to swim through this sort of cold water to get some of the moons later on. Uh... Okay, let's stop trying to be, like, wacky and just get up there. There we go. There we go, super easy, see? This one actually doesn't show up until you have the five moon shards, but the moon shards are all on the ground and really easy to get, so I'm not really sure why it's like that. <sighs> the main charge is still climbing up to it anyway, especially when you have you know, permanently crouching enabled. So yeah, if you stand on these pipes, you instantly go in because you're holding the crouch button already. Uh, one of these... I think I want this one next. I can never remember which one of these are which. Yeah. Okay, these enemies are called Typhoos, and I thought that they were introduced in this game. They're actually in 3D World. So... Um... There you have it, I guess. Gonna need to get some help from them in order to get some of these spinies out of the way. Uh, the main threat these guys pose, I guess, is that, like, Cappy is affected by them while in the air. She can get, like, blown away. So you gotta be careful about that. Also, um, that can happen. Because the ground in this area is, is poison. Oh, jeez. I'm having trouble with this poison floor here. Um, this video might actually end up a bit longer than I intended. Let's see how we go. Okay, so... You actually have to capture... Well, I mean, you don't have to capture him. Technically, there's another way of doing it, but what you're supposed to do, basically, is capture this Typhoon here. Oh, god. Maybe I should go to a different area and get the last couple moons somewhere else. Because this, this is posing a problem. Oh my god. Yeah, this area is clearly bad, Mojo. Let's, let's go somewhere else. Um, if we go to... Get back in here. 
There are two moons in there, of course. Uh, if we go back this way, and into the other door on this side, which is this one. I wonder if these doors had like a label or something, so you knew what was behind them. They don't, they're all the same. Yeah, you can bonk on those little step steps, which is annoying. So this one is just snow everywhere and basically climbing up this little bit of a mountain. Um, there are two moons in here, just like all the others. And there's also a boss battle in this one. Uh, which should be pretty easy. It's not like a hard boss battle, so we shouldn't have too much trouble. Also, you get covered in snow a lot. Um, I think this is probably supposed to be like a reference of sorts to a certain part of the Lake Kingdom because it's got the little flower spinners and the same boss. Anyway, there's a moon around here. That's the hidden moon for this area. The story moon is just at the top of the mountain. There's also, you know, purple coins down here. If you want some purple coins, this is a place you can come. Um, we're gonna backtrack ourselves this way. This is the LP curse, I think. <laughs> okay, it's gotta roll less. Anyway, um... I mean, I was trying to go back anyway, so being sent back to the beginning is not that big a deal, really. So yeah, Cappy stays in the air because of the breeze. She can't come back to return to Mario's head and be rethrown. So that's a little bit of a hassle in some ways. Uh, while you're twirling like this, holding Z doesn't do anything. I mean, thankfully holding Z doesn't do anything because pressing it again and then holding it makes you fast twirl. So if it still had a, the same issue, there would be a problem. Anyway, yeah, you fight one of the Brutals up here. I believe it is Rango. The guy who uses the flower twirler things that we were just using. Rub it up it up. <laughs> but yeah, Ringo is one of the easier brutals. I believe I already did this fight in the run. I'm not sure. Look, we're currently crouching and on ice it's a bit trickier than normal, so there's that. There we go. I think you have to move him three times in this fight. I don't remember if it's three or two. And then you just basically have to outrun him in this bit. Uh, or bump him on the head, actually. That works too. It's just kind of hard to do. Because we're permanently crouching and can't really control our movement on the ground. Alright, so that's two hits. Yeah, we need him three times. Okay. We took a lot more damage there than I really intended. Um, boop. Alright, we're still short one moon once we beat Rango. This will only give us one moon, not, not two. Uh, so we'll need to find one moon somewhere else. I think there's some more we can get up on the surface though, so we might head back up. ba da da ba da ba ba da ba da Ba -da -da. So, yeah, if we wanted to do the story, we would have to go and do the fourth area and get its moon in order to open the last one of these doors. But we don't actually have to do the last... Don't actually have to do the story, and I wasn't planning to do the multi-moon part of the story anyway, so... No need to worry, I guess. <laughs> anyway, if we just keep jump in this way, we can get back to the pipe. And that pipe will take us back up to the surface. Which is cold and desolate. There's different music up here once you've like stopped the blizzard, but we're not stopping the blizzard, so we won't be hearing it. <laughs> um, I'm sure that there was a moon or three you could still get here. I think the Captain Toad moon is available. So let's just... Yeah, you can just travel over water like that in order to avoid freezing in most situations, which is very helpful. 
yeah, I think the Captain Toad move, which is around here somewhere, is still gettable. So let's... Let's accidentally fall into this freezing water. There's a lot of bonking going on. <laughs> Okay, this video has reached 30 minutes, so hopefully I get to the Captain Toad Moon quickly without too much hassle. I probably should stop long jumping up this slope because I'm just going to keep rolling off. Because, yeah, um, long jumping activates rolling. And that's a bit of a problem for us on a big slope like this. Although, you can do something like that in order to sort of counteract the effects. Uh, there's Cap Peach over there. I forget exactly what Captain Toad is. There's a spot somewhere along this wall. Around the outside that has a Captain Toad hiding in it. Here we go, this is it. I can't see you, Captain Toad. There's all this snow in the way. Yeah! Okay, this video ran a bit longer than I intended it to, so I'm gonna probably stop it right here rather than just moving on to the next kingdom. So, thanks for watching, and next time we'll be checking out the Seaside Kingdom. So, have fun with that, friends. <laughs> sure is cool. You should probably go inside Shavaria Town where it's much warmer.